Hi, I'm Joe Mancini, the product manager for the TX200 pressure transmitter, and today I would like to demonstrate how to range the TX200 in the field without the use of a calibrated pressure source. I have with me an adjustable TX200, range 0 to 1000 psi, and a 4 to 20 milliamp output. I also have with me the installation and maintenance instructions, which details how to range the unit in the field, and a certificate of calibration. We'll also need a calculator in order to perform some basic math to figure out how to range the TX200. The following formula is used to calculate the iCal, which will be used to range the transmitter. The iCal is the current output which the user will set to achieve the desired range, or pCal. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll range the unit from 0 to 1000 to 0 to 400 PSI. We'll get the Cal number either off of the transmitter or from the certificate of calibration, plug that into our formula, multiply that by 16, divide that by the user-defined range, and add back 4 in order to achieve our iCal number. The Cal number reflects the amount of the pressure simulated when the shunt Cal is turned on. This is accomplished by connecting a resistor to the sensor, which simulates approximately 20% of the range. And on a 0 to 1,000 pound range, 205 is approximately 20%. So each TX200 has a 5 to 1 turndown. As I explained, we're turning it down to 400 PSI. And iCal is 12.20 milliamps. The iCal value is the milliamp current that we'll need to see when we're making our adjustments to TX200. So this is the first part of adjusting the TX200. Now we'll go ahead and show you the steps on how to range the unit. So here we are in the field, or in this case our test lab with our transmitter. We've already calculated out the iCal, which is 12.20 milliamps, and again, that's the output current which the user will set to achieve the desired range, in this case 0 to 400 PSI. Remember, this is originally 0 to 1000 PSI. So now what the user will need is a power supply along with a multimeter. And I've already wired the unit, and I've taken the black wire, which is the negative wire from the transmitter, and attached it to the negative terminal on the power supply. I've taken the red wire, the positive wire, from the transmitter and attached it to the negative terminal of the multimeter. And then I've connected the positive from the multimeter to the positive of the power supply. So now we're ready to span the transmitter. We turn the cow button on, again, in order to facilitate the simulation of pressure and that's about 205 pounds and you can see that my milliamps have gone from 4 milliamps at zero to 7.31 milliamps indicating simulated pressure and now I'm going to use my screwdriver to adjust the span button until I read 12.20 on the multimeter and we'll try to get as close as possible using the span and then we can use the fine span button above in order to fine tune and tweak in the value. And there we are. I'll now close the cow button and you'll see that we've dropped down to zero, uh, four milliamps, and you'll see that there's no interaction between zero and span. I did not have to re-zero re my transmitter. So now we'll go ahead and we'll apply some pressure to the unit just to show that we have indeed spanned the control. I'm applying pressure now and you'll see that the multimeter is reading and changing as the pressure increases up to 400 psi. And we've just about achieved 400 PSI and you see that the multimeter now reads 20 milliamps and we've successfully spanned the unit from 0 to 1000 PSI to 0 to 400 PSI and again I'll drop the pressure and we'll return back to 4 milliamps. So there you have it, spanning the TX200 without a calibrated pressure source.